Hey nerds, today we're going to do a retro review of the anime One Piece, which was on the live action version was on Netflix, and uh, we're going to actually start right now. Welcome to the Nerd Soul Show. I am Colin, and I'm David. So I know that this is a little bit of a, a, a review that's kind of long uh not long but at, but at the same time a, a little bit uh late but at the but uh you know we've been trying to kind of get this uh, off the ground for a little bit uh these retro reviews and so uh what we're going to do is that I actually do not know I actually know one piece a little bit from uh the anime my students actually I am a teacher so I'm all my students were talking about it all the time on Netflix and watching it and so when the live action came out I know that um, you know, Nathan had talked about it and also I know you, David is a big, big fan of anime. So, uh, so we're just going to kind of do a little bit of a deep dive into the one piece between all you know, the differences between the anime and also, and also the uh, live action version of it on Netflix and also kind of give, give uh, and also Dave is going to give his thoughts on the whole, on, on the whole season at, uh, and what type of predictions and all those type of things, uh, with it. So I am just coming in here as kind of like, uh, a total, like not knowing what's going on. And, uh, and David is going to pretty much, uh, uh, take the helm of this and, um, and talk a little bit more about one piece. So, um, before, before we do that, uh, before we do that, uh, David, what are your initial thoughts, kind of non-spoiler thoughts about the live-action version of uh, One Piece? Uh, to quickly point out that when I first heard it was announced going to be live-action, I was very skeptical about it because of the Cowboy Cowboy Bebop flop that Netflix did about a year before that. So, um, But the only thing I could say about this show is that this show has been... Um, oversight by the by the original creator of one piece which is ichio uh, oda and which is which makes me feel like a very put my mind at ease thinking like okay since he involved him that means they're really really serious on doing this right and everything Uh, so i uh, but when i saw the the series i was thinking wow this is actually really good so mm-hmm. I can't say perfect, but it's really good. So that makes me feel mm-hmm. appreciative how they do it and everything. Not to mention they kept the, how do I say, the core of the series of what makes the the whole One Piece manga and anime so so um, so popular to, to the to the whole world and such. Cool, awesome. And what type of rating would you would you give uh, the Netflix live ver- live action version of uh, One Piece here? I say in between an eight and nine. Okay, cool, awesome, awesome. And uh, so, again, uh, any other thoughts before we kind of get into spoiler territory? Because I know that there's a lot of fans that are out there um, that that love the anime. Uh, We hope to do some of these more of these retro reviews in the future. But uh, any more thoughts before we get into the spoiler version of this? I would say to all our viewers here, just if you... Like, call, like uh, either pause or close this uh, program right now and watch the series right now. That way you will see it first and then you'll see what we think of it because it's going to be a deep dive and we have a little more analytical stuff, especially I'm very familiar with the series as an anime and manga geek. So I would pinpoint a lot of things like that. So, Okay. All right. Well, uh, so without further ado, we're just going to go to spoilers. But again, if you like conversations like these or or you want more retro, retro reviews from us, please like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. And so without further ado, spoilers ahead. So we kind of did a uh, breakdown in terms of how we did with uh, with our previous iterations of Loki and also the Marvels. We did screenshots. So we're going to kind of take a look at the screenshots and, you know, t- uh, David, why don't you take it away in terms of the in terms of giving the screenshots and the, your thoughts about uh, each of these? All right. So to all of you is here that this season, that what that the first season of One Piece of One Piece live action on Netflix has eight episodes, and we start off at the very very beginning, which was not clearly seen on the anime or the manga before, because we were introduced as for, of Gold D. Roger, who is king of the pirates at this time 
He was known as King of the Pirates because he was the only one that find the, the legendary treasure One Piece and came back alive. But then he was captured by the Marines, who are basically the the uh, the Marines and Marine and Navy military mix that's against the pirates. So he was captured and then he was put, placed on the execution for piracy and 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 then right before he was um, hang or hang up in front of a billions of people. It turned out those billions of people that were watching him were actually pirates themselves. Asking Goldie Roger, where did he hid his his One Piece treasure? Gold Roger did not tell him the exact location, but he gave him a big hint that is on the Grand Line, which is basically the Grand Line is like the equator, but it's like a line that leads to where it is to the One Piece, which is you had to go through the well, treacherous waters and lands and everything in order to reach there and back in return. So which and once he got killed and everyone scrambled to, to start looking for the, the the one piece the one piece treasure. Which and then fifteen years later we led to the new character, which is to our main character, which is named Monkey D. Luffy. Now Monkey D. Luffy is just a I don't know where guy who was found and who was happened to be by accident to an, on another pirate ship. But the thing about the quick, quick uh, lowdown, um, lo, lowdown of uh, Luffy is that Luffy is, was a Luffy is like a, a a nobody basically. But years ago, when he was a kid, he accidentally ate a a, a devil fruit, which happened to have. Power, a possessive power in whoever ate it, and he ha- ate the fruit called a gum gum fruit, which his body turns rubber. And and but the thing is that anyone who ate the devil fruit, the only biggest con and weakness of it, they can not swim, hmm. which seems odd. So further on the next slide here, we can. This is a little origin story of the how he started there. He was just a little boy who got into pirates, got into becoming a pirate, especially with this guy on the right, which is Shanks, who is the leader of the of the Red Hair Pirates. <coughs> Monkey D. Luffy, like or Luffy rather, really, uh, really um, idolized Lu- Shanks, and he really wants to become a pirate, and he wants to really join Shanks. But Shanks thinks that he's not ready yet because of his of his nature, because he's a kid, obviously. But then now he has a gum gum food. Shanks feels that he doesn't he's not ready even more because he doesn't have control of his of the powers he possessed after eating gum gum food. So he so Shanks gave him the the iconic straw hat, which is his, one of his most precious treasures to Luffy. And he told Luffy is when you grow up. And become a pirate yourself. Find me, and then we, and then we'll meet again. Then, then next on. The next on we led to when Luffy bumped into another ship of another pirate, and then bump into Kobe, which is the one on the right. Kobe is basically, he's a sort of a prisoner, because he was attacked by this pirate. I forgot the name, and. Um, that's the name, and then Luffy like came over, just happened to be a gun on board because he was in a um, a barrel, but people thought it's like a keg, but it's not. He actually <laughs> like got out of it, and then he got out of it and tried to hunt for food, and then he talked to Kobe and befriended him about there and talked about dreams where Luffy told it, told Kobe that he wants to be king of the pirates and find the One Piece treasure. And Kobe told him like that is nuts. He couldn't believe that he there's no way possible to do that. And until and Luffy asked him, "What's your dream?" Kobe told him, "I want to be a marine." I was like, "Oh wow!" Then then Luffy said, "Let's get out of this ship." And then when they were found, the Luffy attacked them, and then they found out that that's when they realized and see Luffy can stretch, and he and they found out that he has the gum gum power, uh, devil fruit. Mm-hmm. And then once he escaped, that's what led to the next one. Then we led out to then when Luffy and the 
Kobe are on their way to to the Navy ship uh, to the Navy island, where basically that Luffy wants to drop off um, Kobe there to help him achieve his dream to become a Marine, which then mm -hmm. led to the meet of Zoro, or I mean full name is Rona Zoro, which is he was known as the Pirate Hunter, uh, which is basically a, a bounty hunter looking for pirates. But he's also the thing with Zoro is not only he's looking, for, he's not only a pirate uh, pirate hunter, he also wants to become the world's greatest swordsman by being every swordsman known to the world out there to become the best. But then he was captured because he was seen captured because he was defending a restaurant that was. Um, they having to piss off the the leader of the, the the leader of the, of the Marines at the, on that island there, mm -hmm. and then, but then Luffy befriended him and freed him there, and then asked him to join his team uh, to join his crew, because he admired his strength and everything. The thing with uh, the Zoro is that he has a, he has uh, created his own sword style called the Three Sword Style, which, monkeys like wanting, if you. If your style is three swords, where's the third one going? And it, and it turns out he can hold it in his mouth. <laughs> wow. Heard the door That's in his a, th that is impressive. Yeah. Wow. Which led there mm -hmm. to another character, which the next one is Nami. Nami is basically a cat thief who's basically trying to work, finding all the treasures that she can find for her own, for for her own, not sharing anyone or anything. But the thing with Nami is when we first met her. In both the manga and the anime, she's a mysterious character until you find out later on in the series, in in the season, that that she has a perp, that there's something going, there's something more to it, and then just hunting treasures that she can find. Hmm. So that's that's let that one. So after that, so basically those three escape, and and then after and they all join together to find the One Piece treasure. And on the way there, they end up mean Buggy, Buggy, who is basically the clown, the uh, the leader of the clown pirates. Now this guy is basically just capturing every pirate this and steal any resource that they have and stuff like that. And basically, they in their case when they capture they capture Luffy, Nami, and Zoro because they want to find what the knowledge they have and everything. But little they know that that Luffy and Nami actually got actually got the map that leads to the Grand Line, that leads to the Grand Line, and that would eventually lead them to the One Piece treasure. But the thing is that map is not fully completed because it only tells them of how they get to the Grand Line. So and Bucky just wants to take that. And then also found out, but he also found out. Uh, that Luffy is is somehow uh, connected to to Shanks because Shanks was a fellow pirate to Buggy because in the past Buggy and Shanks were were both working under the same pirate uh, named Blackbeard which you all will find out later on in the, ser in the series. Mm. But Buggy later, but Buggy, but uh, no, I take it back. Luffy found out that Buggy also possesses another. Devil fruit, which is a chop chop fruit, which is basically that can turn his body into pieces and everything. Oh wow! <laughs> so, so that was a battle right there. So, but the thing is that if anyone's wondering if when people when I first saw Buggy in the live action, basically Buggy is an idiot. He's a stupid <laughs> idiot. Basically. But when I first saw Buggy, if you go back. When I first saw Buggy, okay. I'm thinking, oh crap, I thought they were going to make him look like the Joker or something like that. But mm -hmm. the guy who played the um, Buggy, which is Jeff Ward, I give him full credit that he, he portrayed the character almost perfectly. That's almost, that's almost mm -hmm. in everything. Because they did exactly what the Buggy should be, which basically he thought he's trying to act tough and everything. But mm -hmm. all in all, he's still an idiot. So, <laughs> but after the, but then after they had battled with him and got back the Grand Line treasure, they escaped again, which led to another character, which is Usopp, which is basically he's known as a, a sniper, but also as a liar. 
because mm. he used to tell when he was like ever since he was a kid the island that they went on that when they when the our heroes met Usopp Usopp is basically known as the liar because people, Usopp kept telling people that there's pirates coming there's pirates coming but all of these years there's never a pirate coming and then mm. during the time during while he was growing up he befriended with another with a girl of the village which that's in the next slide mm -hmm. Named Kaya. Kaya is the daughter of the some sort of a high elite uh, family and the surviving member too. But she happened to be sick because um, because of some unknown reason and everything. And she had a caretaker, which is on the right, named Makuro. But there's one problem though that they should not realize. And that, that later on, Zoro, the swordsman, recognized him a little bit later. Kuro is actually uh, uh, the captain of the black cat pirates whoa yeah he does he the um, he does not possess a, a devil fruit per se but he has mm -hmm. sort of like a supernatural ability where his his fingers become blades whoa so and he has also the ability the reason why he's that the this his his uh crew is called the black cats because he walks like a cat because you can't hear him, ah. and you can't you can't hear him, and he and he does hiss when he attacks. Oh wow! So, but the thing is that Luffy attacked him though, at, at very uh, attacked him very cleverly and though, and then he because even though he's fast, Luffy is made of rubber, so he's very mm -hmm. quick on his feet, literally, and and so he stands still, and then he beat him to a pulp. Well, actually, by his head. So wow, he, hit, he just uh, knocked him down with his head, which led to that they won. And then Kaya, after saving Kaya, saving Kaya from the and the whole island, Kaya but uh, like rewarded the uh, Luffy and his friends the going merry ship, mm -hmm. for free. Because the purpose of the whole time is uh, of Luffy is find a ship that's big enough that can handle going to the Grand Line. Next we have there, the next. Next we have there that what they literally know that they're being chased by the Marines, which spoiler alert. The guy that you're seeing here is, is is Garp, but his full name is Monkey D Garp, which is turns out to be Luffy's grandfather. Ah, oh, grandfather. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, for those who don't, who doesn't know the anime, who doesn't know the anime, basically Luffy's grandfather is a high-known ranking um, vice admiral of the Marines, mm -hmm. and then and also Luffy is like this kind of the sole remaining uh, so sole remaining fan member that's still alive that's known so far mm -hmm. to Luffy. So he basically raised Luffy until Luffy. Let, ran out of way, ran out of his way to become a pirate himself. So, mm -hmm. and ever since that, uh, ever since Luffy becoming known right now by taking all the pirate, a lot of pirates that's known so far, like he took a Kuro, he took a Buggy, that that came to his radar, and they chased after him, which led to them the, to the Barati, which is the basically a pirate restaurant that's only it's like a sanctuary, kind of like, kind of like John Wick, the Continental. That no one hmm. is allowed, allowed to any to got any piracy business in there. You just dare to eat. If you want to do some pirate business, go outside. It's really simple. wow. So, and then then that's when the crew of the the crew of Luffy, Zoro, Nami, and Usopp met Sanji. Sanji is basically a the one is the best chef in the world so far because he was trained by. Trained by another by a pirate chef who's also known as Black uh, Red Leg Zeph, who was mm -hmm. once uh, who was a retired pirate. But uh, but then later on, but then we get to see like Sanji, who was actually the best one and everything. So, but he stayed. He grew up. He was an orphan. He grew up. Uh, he was raised by Ze the chef Zeph. And by from his cooking and everything like that, so, and um, but uh, during that time, but then literally know that um, but, oh yeah, and I've got to point out, 
uh, Sanji is actually a flirt to a long to to a lot of women. So when you mm. see him in the in the show, he flirts with Nami, like very badly though. It's, it's, <laughs> he's trying to flirt at her, like saying like we we have some what? Okay, I can offer you some wine. So how would you like there? You like something sweet or something, or I can be sweeter. I'm like thinking, oh, come on. <laughs> worst pickup line ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, come on. I mean, it's not, it's not like, it's not, it's not, it doesn't sound like that. And I quote, but, uh, mm -hmm. but it's along the lines like that. Then mm. later on, we've met Arlong, who is in this season the big bad, which later on mm. I'll explain a bit later. Arlong is basically the is like part of. The, is not human, but he he does not possess a devil, eat a devil food. He's basically a fishman, kind of like a mermaid kind of like species and everything, that trying to conquer all the human side of of the world. And he and he came into and he came into basically to eat and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. but then there are some people like want want him out and everything. And Luffy made a scene and everything and caused a big commotion in the fight and everything. Which led to that the Baraji became a battlefield. And then mm -hmm. later on, we met one of my favorite characters, which his name is Me uh, Hawkeye Mihawk, which is basically mm -hmm. one of the one of the seven pirate warlords of the seas. But one twist though is that he actually works for the Marines. Which is basically the seven war that's basically they work for the Marines if they there's there specific pirates they want to get rid of without and they don't have to have a bounty or hunt them or anything. As long as they don't they do, they ask them what to do and if what interests them, they leave them alone. So like that. That's it. Luffy's mm -hmm. Luffy's grandfather Garp called him because he wants him he because Garp wanted to Hawkeye um Hawkeye. But technically I'll take this I mean, let me, let me throw out a little something. In this live series, his name is changed to Dracula Mihawk, which I'm thinking, mm -hmm. why did they do that? Because Hawkeye Mihawk is is fine enough already. I don't know why. Because in the anime and in the manga, he's portrayed he's portrayed as a he as a Dracula like swordsman. Mm -hmm. So that's why he, his eyes look like that. As he is oh, right now. okay. Because that makes sense. That it does make sense. Yeah. His, his eyes look like very devilish and stuff. Yeah. yeah. His eyes are very devilish and his skin's very like pale and everything. So, but the thing mm -hmm. is that the name is uh, is off. And I'm like, I like the original name that was known in the anime and the manga. That's the one change I'm like, I don't get. But anyway, mm -hmm. Garp uh, called, called the Mihawk to cap try to capture Luffy alive. But he ended up having a fight with Zoro because Zoro, when Zoro found out that Mihawk arrived at the Barati, Zoro challenged him to a fight there, which uh, that, I will get back to uh -huh. that again. Zoro challenged him to a fight, but he lost. But Zoro lost. And, and then, but Mihawk did not kill him. But he's like, but he sees some potential in Zoro that he can, that he can be a great swordsman and become a very, the best he can be the perfect uh, rival he ever has. So, but mm -hmm. little they know during the whole fight going on, Nami stole the ship and ran away, which mm -hmm. which made everyone which made a crew wondering what is going on, which led to the re to the mystery of what is going on with Nami, because in this in the whole season so far, that Nami has been stealing every treasure she can find. It turns out that Nami was collecting treasure to pay off a debt that, or deal rather to Arlong because literally no because when she was a child when Nami was a child she was raised by a step um, by a woman who's like her stepmom and by and also with along with her stepsister that great that grew up with her um, her name is Nachiko. Mm -hmm. But there was a time that the the Arlong and the fishmen came to conquer that island, and then that island, and then Nami made a deal with them, saying, "Please, uh, uh, let me make a deal with you. Uh, I'll make you I'll, I'll make you map, char make you charter maps to f above every ocean there is and everything. Because Nami has a talent of 
of, make, of making charter maps for every pirate out there to find about land or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, and he said that the, but the thing is that, that the one problem is that, um, uh, the one problem is that uh, Nami found out that Arlong was not, was never going to abide the deal. She says, mm -hmm. take her treasure and then, and keep, and keep it as is and everything. And that's when all her friends came to rescue him. And you can see that mm -hmm. scenes like Sanji kicking down a, um, a, um, a fisherman here. And you keep going there. Yep. And then you see the fight scenes there, which I really enjoy the fight scenes there because it's exactly how the anime, almost exactly how the anime looked. It's like an exact copy, basically, of what the anime mm -hmm. did, which I really appreciated all that, which we'll explain that later. Now, next thing we know, get going. Mm -hmm. Then next, next thing we have is that Luffy, like, figured out a way to beat, Ar to save Nami and get off of you know, Ar Arlong's grasp by fighting him off and destroy the building that, uh, that Nami was imprisoned in. And he, be and then after a long fight, he beat him to a pulp. And then it's all this, the whole, this, the whole uh, headquarters of Arlong is destroyed, the fishermen. Mm -hmm. Later on, word got out that Arlong was defeated and they put a bounty on, on, um, on Luffy. Of thirty million berries, which is basically like thirty million dollars or thirty million gold in their in their universe. Mm -hmm. So far, this is which is wicked high for us from some no for some nobody who happened to be three m big name pirates already in a matter of in a matter of, of a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. That's what the whole thing, story goes down. Now he became now he got his dream right now. He got a wanted poster right now. So and now word got out about it. So that's the whole mm -hmm. spiel of the story right there, like a little crash course there. So oh wow. So that's the whole story here. But let's get down with the cast here. So mm -hmm. uh, which again, I was very skeptical at first of who was going to be casted there. But after watching the series, they did a good job because it has been reported that the casting, that the creators of the show and the ca and the casting crew has one thing that makes this show much much more special because it involved the it involved with the the creator of one piece to be involved in picking the cast mm -hmm. for each character and mm -hmm. even like the original voice of a Japanese voice of of uh, Luffy joined in as well to pick who would be the perfect person to pick Luffy mm -hmm. like like the for example for Luffy you got Inaki Gudi who is a Mexican uh, rising actor who who got the part everyone's mm -hmm. like wondering like there's been reports about why is Luffy Latin, Latin and everything and I'll tell you mm -hmm. this this is a fact back in 19 uh, 2009 when volume when the volume 15 53 volume 53 manga of One Piece released there was an interview of was when asking the creator Ichi Chiro of what if Luffy's in real life, how would you describe him? And mm -hmm. Ichiro answered, Luffy would be Brazilian or some Latin heritage. So that's mm -hmm. why it, it was he cast in Inaki Yaguri as Luffy. But also it's another funny story, is that it was reported that when when they saw um Inaki Yaguri's the audition tape for Luffy he made him laugh. Mm -hmm. That's what made him pick him and everything. And so does the original voice actress, Mayumi Tanaka, to pick him as well. Mm. And like it's, but after watching him, he's close to pick the to, to get to play Luffy, and he's really great. And he's very energetic. He's very silly because Luffy's a very silly guy. And he's very, how do I say, dumbfounded sometimes. Mm -hmm. He's because he's very silly and everything, but he can be serious and everything. And the next thing we have, Ronora Zoro. Yeah, you can see oh, that. Sorry. Hey, you go back there. Yeah. As I do, like you should see the next slide. There'll be comparison between the anime and the and then live action. So which mm -hmm. I appreciate though. But now back to the cast here. We have Ronora Zoro, which is played by Mac Mackinu. 
which uh, to those who don't know Makinu's work, he was known very well in Japan, playing a lot of martial art related uh, ca characters, especially Yuki Shiro Tomi, Tomo from mm -hmm. uh, Veroni Kenshin, the third movie, the live action one. Mm. He was really good in that, and also the recent uh, live action flop, uh, Saint, Saint Seiya, the live action. And uh, this guy did redeem himself very well after the Saint Seiya flop. That he did very well in everything. Even a lot of fans appreciate how serious he took about the character and such. Mm -hmm. Next we have um, next we have Emily Rudd, who is which we learned that she's actually an anime fanatic. So she's mm -hmm. so she's already a, a she's she always wanted to play Nami when she was when she first wanted to do the auditions. Next we have uh, Jacob Gibson who plays U Usopp, and Usopp is basically I guess not only he's a liar, but the thing is that he's also like Luffy, very silly. He's very he acts cowardly and everything. And Jacob Gibson captures the charm of Usopp and everything. What makes people love about him? Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. And then lastly, which is much more surprising, is Taz Skylar, who plays Jisanji. Before to play the part, the guy, the ta Taz, Taz, like, actually learned Taekwondo and cooking mm. for the part. Wow. So that's impressive. So what you see, so for when you see the the sh the, the scene where him cooking. Mm -hmm. That's him actually doing the cooking. There's no stunt double or anything like that. That's his actual mm -hmm. hands doing the cooking like that because he learned from multiple cooking show, uh, sh not show, show, shows, schools and trainers to do the, some dishes and everything and to, to play the part and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole cast. They all played each character about perfectly and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, there's a lot of some fanat one piece fanatics that pinpoint a lot of things, like say like, um, like for example, the Luffy's hair. Luffy's hair in the live action is curly. Well, in the anime, it's all down and and wavy and everything. And I'm like, don't. And also Sanji, he has like something like a curl on his on his eyebrow there, and I'm thinking mm -hmm. Usopp supposed to have a long nose because uh, like a Pinocchio like nose. But the creators thinking like that's like tiny things that can be overlooked very easily, which is a smart idea. So I don't think that it's very necessary in everything. So, so yeah. So as you can see mm -hmm. here, we have comparisons that how how the creators want to make it look like the as closest to the anime as possible. Like like a few here, as I'm showing right now, that about iconic scenes like Luffy like pulling his um, his cheek to show how. Mm -hmm. much this is a uh, buggy when he was fighting the Luffy when he was fighting Luffy and then he fi and Luffy figured out a way how to make, make the how to make buggy's powers to his disadvantage basically what happens is that they kick all the other pieces of his body into trap the uh, treasure tr tresses and it led them to this form which is a mini form which is basically his two hands his two feet and his head that's it. <laughs> this is an iconic scene in the manga and the cartoon and everything, which is like a silly little dwarf right there. Mm. Like the next one there. Next mm. up, this is like the most one of the iconic scenes right there with Zoro with all his three swords in, in battle and everything, with the third one in his mouth. Mm. This uh, specific shot was taken at the time at the Battle of Barati, where he was fighting against Mihawk, uh, Dracula Mihawk. So, which is doing his special technique and such. Next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like a top and top um, comparison about uh, how they do it, which tells, which shows like how the creators are really, really going to take this seriously and everything to give the fans of One Piece series what they want and everything. And feel like this is and showing the charm and the and the and the how, basically uh, what makes a good show so great and everything. So they pick some iconic scenes in there and trying to mimic from the anime series, which is very great. Next one. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most, my, the favorite, one of the biggest iconic scenes there. This is the, this is the, this is the, uh, the scene before the battle against Arlong, the fish and the fishermen. The scene was like that Nami is so upset about the, the deal was 
never going to be uphold by our long and everything. She was so upset and so angry and everything that she did all that for nothing and everything. And when Luffy came over and see trying to comfort her. Nami turned to her and turned to him and say, "Help me." And then Luffy put on a straw hat saying, "I will." Mm -hmm. That's my iconic scene right there. And next one is right after that scene when he when Luffy put the hat on her head. This is a three shot comparison here. You see the you see the manga in the top left, the anime mm -hmm. at the right, and the live action right there. It's an exact duplicate of the scene right there. That's, that's so mm -hmm. iconic. That's why it's, it's like I'm so I was like so happy when I saw it. So mm. it tells you how serious the the queers took to make the show work and everything. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, another iconic scene is the the battle of all along is then when Luffy did the battle axe, but he straightens his foot and uses as a weapon, hence the battle axe, and pound him to destroy that to pound all along straight through. I don't know how many floors to how many floors he pound him through to destroy that building. So mm -hmm. it's one there. Okay, now during the series there there were some changes in everything, which but when you watch a series, you think back and thinking like, it makes sense. Because what you see in here is Don Krieg, who is basically supposed to be, the in the anime, he was sort of big back in a small arc called the the Barati Arc, which basically mm -hmm. he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a pirate himself too. And then he's supposed to take over the Barati just for his own and everything. But in the... But in the live series, but in the live series, he was taken down by Dracu Mihawk. And mm -hmm. he was not that a, a big character to become a big banner or thing. And um, there were and back to the part about changes between the anime and the and from the manga to the live action, there were the adaption made several structural changes with the creators, with the original creators, Ichiro's approval. But just focusing such like, like instead of like making making Arlong the big the seasons big bad and introduce him at the Barati, was to basically ramp up towards the last two episodes without dragging the season on and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So which is a smart idea because now when I think about when I watch the anime myself again to review to remind myself thinking okay that makes sense because it because that character drags on a lot. I mean, that's straight to the point here. So, mm -hmm. so that's a smart idea. Now, um, go back one. Oh, go back one? Okay. Go back one. Yeah, you skipped that a little bit. This is Colby right here, which I give the guy, the guy who played Colby, Morgan Davis, he, who is a, who's a known trans, uh, transgender male, mm -hmm. and he played the character Colby like if it's his own, because he did because Kobe in the anime and the manga, he's a shy and timid kid. But he has lots of dreams and everything. Mm -hmm. But the way Kobe portrayed him is spot on. And mm. I'm looking forward to see him again in the next seasons of how he will grow. Because in the season in later seasons, Kobe did turn out to be to become a lot stronger in terms of physically and mentally. Cause now at the end of the <clears throat> at the end of the uh, of the season, he was taken in by uh, by uh, Monkey D. Garp, the Vice Admiral, which is Luffy's grandfather, to take mm -hmm. him in as his protege, as along with this guy, the next one. Okay. Now, for those who don't, for, for those of you who recognize him, this is um, um, shoot, I forgot his, his name. Um. He is basically he is the son of the axe arm Captain Axe Arm of One Piece, mm -hmm. the Captain Morgan, the axe the axe the axe hand the ca captain, and he has a son and the guy you see right there that's his, that's his unfortunately his son, which uh, his name is uh, if I can check it his son's name. What's his son's name? Huh. His son's name is oh yeah, Hemi Po. Hem Hemi Po. Basically, who's a spoiled rich brat kind of thing like that. But kind of looks the fart. <laughs> what? 
kind of looks the part. <laughs> yeah, he kind of looks the part. Now. He, <laughs> he he's like a spoiled brat when you see him at the end. But the guy who played betrayed him is did very well in everything. But later mm-hmm. on, but the thing is, like, there's another change too because they're not supposed to show these two characters be taken in by Garb to train him. That's shown in later in the later season in the anime. But in this mm-hmm. one, but in this one, that's another that's another change because. The, the series creators think that um, they want to they want to um, they want they want a Garp to be a more present character along the immediate marine pursuit of Luffy and his, his crew, which is called the Straw Hats, by the way, mm-hmm. and and keep the stakes high up and everything, and let it feel like it's not a um, a drag on chase and everything like that. That's mm-hmm. what. So that's another smart idea and everything. Because in the anime and manga, it wasn't revealed that Garp is Luffy's grandfather until like several sagas later in the anime. Like I don't know, I don't know what episode that is, but that's several sagas later. So so introducing him early, it's kind of I was thinking, why did you introduce him early? But uh, but then I think about it, thinking like, okay, the the it will instantly tell the audience that why this guy is in, in, so interested in Luffy and why are they chasing him? And there mm-hmm. we go. So it's very appreciated right there. Now, this is another iconic scene in here. Because in the anime, because in the anime, this season, th- I mean, this saga of, of this eight episode season is basically covering the whole East Blue saga, which in, in the anime as ended in episode 53. Mm-hmm. And then this one is the iconic kind of scene where everyone put their foot on the on the barrel, basically kind of a chat. You know that when you there's a new boat being built and you throw a wine bottle kind of thing. To yep, it's a Christian. It's Christian, a christening all one. Yeah, this is their own way of christening, and each one of them tells them uh, what their dream is. Mm-hmm. And what there was another thing is that they show each of them show a flashback of their childhood. That mm. like Luffy he wants to be king of the pirates. Nami, she wants to see the world, and and Usopp wants to be a brave man and everything, and mm-hmm. Zoro wants to become uh, the greatest, greatest swordsman, mm-hmm. and Sanji wants to see the all blue, mm-hmm. which to all to everyone that doesn't know what the all blue is, there's four blues, which is basically the sea, you know, like Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean. Yeah. In the in the One Piece world, there's northwest, east, east. West blues, but the all mm-hmm. blues when all blues meet together, all the oceans meet together in one point, which mm-hmm. is what Sanji's wanted to go because so Sanji he wants to try all the delicacies, all the kinds of food that can be created and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So that's the iconic scene right there. Now, this one is a secret scene after credits to, of the mm-hmm. last episode. This one here, for those who are wondering who it is, a lot of people who watch the anime and manga, this is Smoker. Mm-hmm. Who is a, basically another marine captain who possessed the who ate the devil food of smoke, who can adapt his body into smoke, basically. So, so that tells me of where exactly the anime and manga would be here. Like I said, the the creators tur- change things around and everything, but then it later makes sense because the next saga. That I believe in season two, which is reported by IGN and comicbook.com, that season two is already written. So I believe that season two will introduce will bring them to start the enter the to enter the Grand Line saga, mm-hmm. that, which will led to mean this guy. This is a mm-hmm. smoker. So we will know what's gonna happen then and everything. But there's also another character which I'm not sure if he's gonna be seen, which is um, which is basically the, I, mean, I don't think I can say it yet because I don't want to, because we don't know what exactly what season two is going to bring, so we'll find it later. So last one, and then that's the whole breakdown of the whole season there. Wow, that was that was really impressive, David. You did it, you did it in, a, in that amount of time, and it's also over, you said eight episodes of it? There's you only said? eight episodes in this season, mm. which, like I said, I mean, I give credit to creators of I like doing eight episodes. Mm-hmm. How do I cover eight episodes of fifty-three episodes of the anime, and I think it's twenty-three volumes of the manga. 
mm -hmm. of that. And so I give him, I applaud him for that. That doesn't drag on, it's not missing anything, but it made some hints of the next seasons coming up and everything. Because it's reported so far that that they're aiming for six seasons. But now that they're right. reported of doing 12 seasons. Yeah. Which I'm like, um, yeah. that's tough. Because yeah. up until now, in the anime itself, it's mm -hmm. still going on. After 25 years, since 1999. Right now, right now, in the anime is up to, as of right now in this recording, is right now up to date of 1,086 episodes. And the manga itself is still going on right now. Right. So, which is... So, so basically, they're, they're, they're just, they're still writing the manga right now. And then they're adapting it for the, for, for the anime. And then, and then the live action is like the last, last piece of it. Ah, I get it now. Yeah. So that's why I'm thinking like, I have a feeling I know what, uh, sagas are they gonna cover which is basically the like i said enter the grand line saga and also the alabasta kingdom saga mm -hmm. um which alabasta kingdom saga is basically the um it's a desert island and stuff like that that's one of the first places they that the straw hat crew are entering when they go into the grand line and then mm -hmm. in the grand and then back let me revert back let me go back event in the Enter the Grand Line saga, you get to see every you said to see the Straw Hats crew getting themselves together, preparing themselves to go to the Grand Line to enter the Grand Line, actually. Mm. So yeah, and uh, awesome. Yeah, so we don't know when, but uh, ever since the virus strike has passed now, so and they already written season two already, so we'll find out mm -hmm. when they'll do it. But my guess is I don't think so with two. 2024 is possible because of the writer's strike. Mm -hmm. And so I guess we'll see what happens there. But, yeah. But up to date right now, I mean, this was a gamble for Netflix, again, doing another live action anim of right. an anime favorite. Because when they did Cowboy Bebop, it's horrible. Nothing wrong with the actors. That's the direction. The, the big difference between Cowboy Bebop and One Piece is that and I wish that Netflix did this with the upcoming live action Avatar The Last Airbender series, which I'm I'm skeptical about that. <laughs> it was One Piece. They were smart enough to work with the original creator of One Piece. Mm -hmm. Because no and also the cre this one of the show creators, the, the show creators, Matt Owens, is actually a big fan of One Piece. And he wants to do this right. So he called and reach out to Ichio Oda to come and um, and be an oversight uh, and be an oversight of the whole project and be sure to do it right. Even like in even like um, they even allow him to make the decision to you, is this good enough? Mm -hmm. They'll go ahead. But if he doesn't like it, they had to do a reshoot and everything like that and mm. change the uh, the dialogue. And that way, it feels right to like the anime and manga, mm. which what makes it work. So I wish that um, there are also some things like adding in like a romance between some of the characters, but Oda, but Ichiro Oda says absolutely not. Hmm. The point of the show, what makes the show so great, is the friendships between the between the characters. Mm -hmm. I mean, only one character has a has a has a uh, romance, which is Usa, because he has a sort of relationship with Kaya. And everything, so that's fine. But but putting a romance in between the characters, because there's some people mm -hmm. thought that Nami and Zoa will get together, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. So they they're more like a brother and sister kind of thing, which is shown in the series there. And cool. um, but then but the thing I appreciate that the creators do is to reach out to the original creator to make this show what makes it. To the to to keep the charm that makes the manga and the anime so well so loved, and transfer it into the live action series, and to this date, the series has more than four hundred seventy five million hours viewed and sixty three point wow. six million viewers up to date, and that even beats the one of the popular um, series Sex Education. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, def definitely Netflix has had some good successes here and there. 
uh, in this space. Uh, some hits, some misses, but uh, but yeah, looking forward to seeing what what happens with the next season and how many seasons they're going to really uh, come up with um, with One Piece. So thank you for that deep analysis of uh, of One Piece. But uh, any other final thoughts before we wrap up uh, our uh, our breakdown? Um. One thing I want, um, they should like. I think the the cast and the the creators should look back at this series as a giant stepping stone. Even though it's a success, but the thing is, there are some mm-hmm. things that they can do better at. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the dialogue they got the, some of the dialogue that's exactly like the anime and manga, mm-hmm. but it's just that sometimes the the action cinematography when they do the fight scene it feels a bit slow. Mm-hmm. So, I understand why because the 3D effects, like um, like Luffy stretching his arm out and everything, and all the swords uh, that uh, Zoro has to do and everything, mm-hmm. I get that. But the thing is, they should do figure out some ways to make it faster. And then, and then one other thing I forgot with this. Um, uh, but basically, that um, that the actors need to get into more of the character, especially Inai Goody, who plays Luffy. He get he get he's getting it, but he needs to do a little bit more to put more enthusiasm and be just like the characters in the anime. Mm-hmm. I mean, because in this version of live action, people a lot of people thought it's gonna be just like the anime. Not mm-hmm. really, because in anime you can do like you know the huge popping eyes or like the devil kind of face kind of thing and some. Mm-hmm. Giant fist to pit the punch the punch people. I get the direction that the the creators are doing right now because they're trying to make it more a realistic tone. Mm-hmm. And like that not like Pirates of the Caribbean, but a realistic tone, but just like the anime, make it funny and witty and everything, which is what I appreciate. So I mm-hmm. hope that the next season will be a lot better, which I assume it will be. So, but they did a good job in this season. Okay, cool. Well. Thanks again for for your review and breakdown of One Piece. Um, so th- this was a retro review of One Piece. If you like um, more of this type of content where we do retro reviews, please like, share, and subscribe uh, this uh, this video and also our previous videos. And we will see you in the next one. So have a good one, everybody. Take care. See you later.